All right, welcome to the Liquid Lumens episode of this uh, 2006 Wake Setter 247 build. Liquid Lumens was nice enough to hook us up with a above water RGB light. We have underwater RGB lights. We have like 15 RGB cup holders uh, in the boat. This thing is going to light up like a Christmas tree at night, all while controlling it with your remote, whatever color you're looking for. Should be pretty sweet. The first thing we're going to do. Um, is tackle the the above water light here we're going to take out these these white uh, 12 volt lights here that Malibu puts in for the old Malibu logo that goes right here and we're going to install this RGB uh, light strip right here so that it lights up the swim deck and stuff if you're out at night um, swimming or whatever you might be doing and then we're going to uh, go ahead and drill the holes in the hull here to install the underwater lights uh, they're white powder coated. They come in many colors. We chose to go with the white powder coated to match the boat along with RGB. So again, between this, these on, uh, top side lights and the cup holders, we're going to have one controller that will control everything in the boat to whatever color you want. So they're all going to change and fade and everything in, all in one. It's going to be pretty awesome to watch. Um, and you can actually tie that same controller into speakers any kind of courtesy lights, really any other RGB lights that you want, you can tie everything together into that controller to make your whole boat, um, you know, change colors all at once. So we're going to get started on this and um, then we'll start drilling holes in the hull. We'll walk you through how to do that. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you can, our 2006 X2 build, we did the same thing last year. This year we're, we're going a little step further with the cup holders and the top side light um, just to bring it to the next level. Thanks for watching, hit like and subscribe, and we're gonna get started. So we have these little factory Malibu lights here, we're just gonna snip those off. We'll pull them to the other side, cap them off, or terminate them depending on where they're going here. Always make sure to clean off the area where you're gonna put anything adhesive-wise to ensure that you don't have any adhesion issues. Make sure the bolt's nice and clean. Everything's gonna stick. As with anything, you wanna measure twice and cut once. Uh, here's our top side light here. And uh, you'll see the wire harness here. Uh, we're gonna use a quarter inch drill bit to drill a hole through the fiberglass to pop this wire harness through so that we can hook up our uh, top side light to the controller. Um, we're going to go ahead and measure the light overall length, which is 53 inches. I'm going to find the center of the boat here. Obviously, we can go by this here and uh, get a good idea. So 26 and a half is half of 53, of course. So this is where our light's going to go. I'm going to mark each side. We'll put this up backwards just to make sure we're right on. <clears throat> This plug is three quarters down and three eighths in from the edge. Now we're just going to kind of try to see how high we can put this. Looks like we'll be able to put it right on the edge there. The light also comes with these uh, these white caps for the end of the the, the thing here. Um, so we want to make sure we have room for this extra quarter inch, three eighths above this. Um, make sure that we're not going to, you know, that's going to attach flat and stuff. I'm just going to drop it down just a tiny bit. Now that we've got it marked where we want to drill our hole here, 
Uh, the other last thing we do want to do is go inside the boat, make sure that there's nothing in the way that we're going to drill through. Uh, the only thing in the way there is carpet, which isn't going to affect us here. So we're going to start by going through the gel coat with the drill backwards. This will make sure you don't chip the gel coat. These sharp edges of the belts, if you're going forwards, will just chip the gel coat. So we're going to go through the gel coat with the drill backwards. Once we get through the gel coat into the fiberglass, we'll go forwards and that will prevent any damage. So I don't want to keep drilling a bigger hole. Uh, we're not able to get these connectors through with the wires. So I'm just going to pull these connectors off and um, get the wires through. And then we'll reheat shrink and uh, rewire these once they're through the boat here. All right. So we snipped the wires off, as you can see here. Uh, or not the wires, the connectors. Uh, there's red, blue, green, and black, just like all the R other RGB stuff we have. Uh, these were just tied together with different connectors. So we're going to, once we shove them through the bolt, we'll reconnect everything. So everything looks good. We're going to go and pull, a, pull off the adhesive backing. Just kind of do a little bit at a time so you don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Make sure we're straight and level and everything. All right, now these caps, they have the same adhesive on it. Shockingly, all the moldings on your cars are held on with the same adhesive, so this stuff should last just fine on the back of this boat here. All right, top side RGB light done. Now off to the underwater lights. All right, so we've got our spliced wires, and what we're gonna do now is I've cleared back a bit more of the um, outer shielding over the wires and we are going to run some heat shrink tubing over this first of all so that way when we're done doing all of our connectors we can run this back over and seal those back up again i'm actually going to run two of those to cover the distance of wire that i cut So one thing to keep in mind here is obviously it's going to be a wet environment so we want to make sure these wires are sealed up. So we are going to take our red wire first and our butt splice connector. And what I like to do is after I strip this back I like to twist it up and then I'm going to fold it in half. This is going to give us a little bit of a thicker connection in there for when we pinch the metal for it to grab onto. So we're then going to push that wire into our butt splice. Once we get in there nice and tight, we are going to pinch that off. Now for the remainder of our wires, we are going to repeat the same process uh, for our black power wire. It is a little bit thicker, so we'll step up the gauge size on our heat shrink tubing, but I will cut back to that when we have the remainder of the three done. For this uh, last black power wire, we are stepping it up one gauge. It is quite a bit thicker. Um, so for the butt connector, we went up to the next size and same with the two sizes of heat shrink tubing. They each just went up one size, but otherwise it will be completed the same as the rest of the wires. All right, as you can see, we've got all of those connectors hooked up on one end. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the boat where we put those wires through and strip the wires and get them prepped so that we can do the same thing on that end and connect them all up. Uh, one thing I would recommend is if you do have to cut those ends off, strip the wires before you slap everything to the boat. That's one thing we should have done beforehand to save us a little bit of time and, you know, there's less space while it's in the boat. So keep that in mind if you are doing this yourself at home. Uh, but yeah, I'll flip the camera around and get some of that stuff now. All right, as you can see, we've got our wires coming through the boat here where we drilled. Um, 
There are two colors of each wire, so what we'll be doing is stripping them down to the same length and then twisting them together before we put them in that connector. For these ones, I probably won't be bending them over because we won't need to double them up because they are already doubled up because there's two of them. So I'm actually probably going to cut back this uh, wire sleeve a little bit more so I can slide that heat shrink tubing up and then get them prepped to do the same thing to these as we did to the other connectors. All right, now that we've got all those connections uh, pinched and sealed, we are going to take that heat shrink tubing that we ran earlier and run it over those connections. We've got one piece there, we've got another piece on this line over here. So now we've got all of those connections covered and we are just gonna heat all that up. All right, we're continuing progress here on the Malibu 247 build. Uh, while Jake finishes up wiring the cup holders, shrink wrap and everything, making sure everything's watertight and, and secured and, and ran to the batteries, I'm gonna start installing the Liquid Lumens RGBW underwater lights. So I have them in my hand here, powder coated white. This boat specifically, and I'll show you guys in a second, um, has an area underneath where we're putting the ballast bags that's fiberglass shut. So in a lot of boats, there's like a flip up kind of area where you can access lower. In this boat, it's literally fiberglass shut and filled with foam. So we're not gonna be able to use that to access the wire um, without it, without cutting a huge hole, cutting out the foam, digging it out, um, which is just a big project. We'd have to refiberglass it or do something to make it look nice. So what, what we found is right near this bracket right here, uh, they cut out a little area to attach the bolts obviously on the other side. And we're able to actually get a wire next to here that will work right on the outside of the swim deck. Uh, preferably with these underwater lights, you want to put them as wide as possible um, on the boat. So ideally we would probably put them out here farther, uh, but we're just going to have to move in, move them in a little bit, maybe six inches, um, just to get the wire through. Um, you want to make sure when you are installing these that they're under the water line when you're empty. Uh, these need to be underwater to keep them cool and uh, you don't want them running for a long period of time above water. So if we put the wire right here, right next to this bracket on both sides, we'll be able to get the wire in there, run it to the battery, and we'll be fine. It'll be underwater and it'll work awesome. So we're gonna start that process. Uh, Liquid Lumen sends you these templates. Uh, you need 11 64ths drill bit and a half inch drill bit. These stainless steel screws are fairly sensitive to breaking. They're a little bit harder than normal screws. So instead of a normal screw where it would like twist, these snap off. So make sure to use the correct size drill bits. Um, I've learned that in the past, previous uh, installs that uh, you wanna go buy the bits. So we're gonna have, we have a need a half inch bit and 11 64 inch bit. We're gonna get these uh, templates in the area, clean off the hull, make sure everything's clean because we're gonna be uh, gluing these on with 4200 as well. So you want to make sure everything's neat and clean. We'll, we'll be taping these templates on, drilling our holes, getting these mounted, and then Jake will finish up wiring it to the battery and to the liquid lumens control box. And um, we'll get these RGBW underwater lights and the rest of the RGBW project wrapped up. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. We're going to get to it. I'm gonna wheel you guys over here and show you what we're working with on the inside of the boat. <laughs> so you can see this area we cut out a little bit with the foam. We're gonna refiberglass that. And then you'll see that little pocket there where the bolts are. So we're gonna run the wire right into that pocket and then we'll run it up and up to the battery. Um, again, this area underneath the ballast bag is completely full of foam. So we're not gonna be able to do anything there. So we're just gonna advance wipe off the area where our lights are gonna go, the solvent, get it nice and clean. As you can see, we need to clean the boat. 
once we're done, this whole thing will need a detail. We're gonna go ahead and do both sides. We can go tape our template up here. It's nice to use clear tape. You can actually still see the holes through the tape. Not clear, but lighter color tape. Um, so you can drill through these holes and these, uh, they won't move if you tape over them. All right, we got our brand new 11 64ths bit here. As I've said before, I always drill through the gel coat in reverse, in reverse. Then we'll make sure you're not chipping the gel coat. The tape will help too, but um, it's always a good habit. All right, we got our half inch hole drill that went right into that pocket we were talking about where the screws are. So we're good to go on this side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and then we'll get the lights mounted. All right, we got our templates off. We got everything cleaned up with solvent just one last time. Now we're gonna go ahead and feed our wire through the hole and uh, get our lights get them uh, cocked up with our fast gear 4200 uh, this is a great marine grade sealant that will work perfect for these lights go pick it up uh, if you're going to do this project i'm going to get jake in the boat to help feed the wire we'll get the wire ran we'll get it kind of set up and then we'll get the screws and and get it attached all right, we're gonna just test fit our screws before we go ahead and get this glued up and mounted so we don't make a mess if something's wrong. We'll put the screws in the holes, make sure they hit the holes uh, in the hull and we'll be good to go. All right, we got the wire pulled in. We got our screw kit here. Comes with zip ties for the wire along with the ring terminals to hook it up to the controller. All right, all the holes are hitting the, all the screws are hitting the right spots on the holes. So we'll leave this hanging for a second. Make sure this side's good to go. So we're gonna open up our 4200, get that punctured, get it cocked around the edge there, get the screw, the light screwed in, and we'll be ready to rock. This 4200 is a sticky mess. So uh, just make sure you cut a small enough hole in this um, tip here so you're not wasting anything. So if you see this little channel that they routed into the light, that's where we're gonna put the adhesive. And then we're also gonna put the adhesive inside the hole of the screws to make sure everything seals. And that will um, ensure that the whole light's sealed. You can also see there's a circle around this wire. So you basically just uh, overfill these all, all these areas along with this circle here. And then when you screw the light on, it should squeeze out, clean up all the excess, and you'll never have a leak. Again, you don't want to over tighten these. Uh, stainless will snap off. So just tighten them just enough until you see a little bit of uh, adhesive squeezing out as we can see here and then stop. We're just gonna give that a time to rest, allow all the adhesive to squeeze out and everything. And then we'll go ahead with solvent and, and wipe it clean. We're gonna get to the other side and get that one wrapped up. All right, guys, uh, we got our liquid lumens light installed, as you can see. Here's our swim platform bracket. Uh, we are just gonna go throw the swim platform on and take these bolts out, and uh, they hit our lights. So if you're gonna do this project, make sure to uh, pull these bolts out first. Th these pins would work fine if we put them through the other side, of course, but uh, we left these in here so we didn't lose them, and now we can't get them out. So what we're gonna have to do is bolt cut these and then go get some new uh, pins 
so that we can put them in from this side. Good tip for you, make sure you don't do that yourself. Because we did the top side light above the swim deck as well as the underwater lights, Liquid Lumen sent us two controllers. Uh, one is a 12 volt controller for the top side lights. And the other one is for the underwater lights. This converts the power from 12 volts to 32 volts because their lights are uh, higher voltage, which makes them way brighter. Um, so you actually hook each light into separate connections here. And then we're gonna run a switch to the dash to turn it all on. And then we're actually gonna tie in all of our cup holder lights and everything else into the same setup here so that we have everything controlled by the same controller. Liquid Lumens provides you with a nice remote so you can change the colors. It's audio activated as well, so it'll flash with the stereo and everything like that if you want it to. Um, so it's a pretty sweet setup. So we're gonna go get these mounted here by the battery. Um, we're gonna put in a Blue Sea Systems 30 watt um, fuse panel, I guess. That's, where we're, that's what we're gonna hook all the ballast pumps um, and all the RGB stuff to it along with everything else we're running just so we have a nice, easy place to access your fuses and swap them out if you need to. So we're gonna get going on finishing up the wiring process for this whole setup. And um, then we really just have to tie a few more hoses into the ballast system and obviously clean it up, put the seats back in and we'll be ready to rock. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe, follow along. Hit us up in the comments for any questions you guys have. Again, we'll try to post everything we're using outside of what we're purchasing from Liquid Lumens in the video in the description so you guys can go pick up everything you need uh, with our material list. Cheers. couple days on these RGB cup holders. Splicing these wires and hooking everything up is quite a bit of work, but uh, we're close to getting there. You can see these are, they are lit up and just kind of set in here. We've had to notch the back of the cup holder. Uh, when I say we, I mean Jake. Jake's been doing all the work out here. Uh, we had to notch the back of this to allow for the wires because they come out of the bottom. And then what we'll be doing is siliconing these in, and then we'll be dropping in uh, the stainless cup holders right into the top there and siliconing those down as well so everything stays and you're not pulling them out when you take your cup or your can or whatever you might have in there. Hi, right, welcome back to the 247 build. We have a uh, most of the wiring done, we have the underwater lights in, we have the cup holders in, we're getting started on the stereo. Uh, we weren't uh, able to get a hold of wet sound, so what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, tweak the existing stereo in this boat. It doesn't have any blown speakers, we've tested all the amps, everything works. So the stereo is really fine, uh, we were just hoping to, you know, upgrade it a little bit, but um, a lot of the other, a lot of the companies due to COVID are out of stock on speakers, they're out of stock on amps, all kinds of stuff. We were able to source a rock for Fosgate sub as well as an amp. Uh, we took off the panel on the driver's side of the boat uh, that goes in between the walkway and that's where we're gonna install the, stu the sub. The passenger side has a little pocket to storage. We're gonna put it on the passenger side but that side uh, has the amp in the way and we're running out of space to put stuff that's kind of by that glove box behind the spotter seat where we want to keep everything if possible. Uh, the amps and uh, the battery switch and stuff like that are taking up most of the wall space. So what we're going to do, obviously we can't screw anything to the side of the boat, um, which is just, you know, carpeted fiberglass on the uh, left side in kind of by the batteries. So what we're going to, what we did is we made this panel um, that we're going to get in there with some brackets. Uh, this is just marine plywood uh, covered in carpet that matches the boat. And so we're going to install this on the left side and it's give us you know some L brackets so you can remove it if you need to but it's going to give us you know a, a nice space to mount the liquid lumens control boxes for the top side and underwater lights as well as the sub amp 
and uh, get everything neatly organized and connected. Um, have all of our wiring connections, our fuse box, everything else that we're going to add to this boat wiring wise um, organized and, and clean. This is the best option that we could find that uh, will look good and uh, make it easy to access if something ever does go wrong. So we're going to go get this installed with these, those brackets and then uh, we're going to move on to get the sub and amp hooked up, get all of our control boxes mounted on here, get everything wired up and uh, we'll be close to wrapping up on this project. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Appreciate it. All right, guys, we're almost done with the wiring here. Uh, you'll see the panel that we put in here. Uh, we mounted here so we could add some more room. Um, we have the liquid lumens underwater light box, the above water topside light box. We actually decided to mount our sub in this area. We're going to get better sound out of it than mounting it um, through the walkway. It's just a little bit more enclosed so it hits harder. We got our sub amp right there. You can see our battery switch and our existing amps that were in here. We just got to put our batteries, get them all hooked up, put our batteries in our battery boxes. Um, here's the distribution panel that we put in for the ballast pumps with the 30 amp fuses. And here's the panel that we took off uh, where we were going to put the sub. But we're going to go ahead and mount that panel back on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this black pocket out here and we're going to water jet a piece of stainless there and light it up with RGBs so that we have a vent for the sub on this side and this side will be the storage. <clears throat> we have all of our underwater lights in. We silicone them down with clear silicone as well as the stainless cup holder so those are all good. Uh, we got our, all of our fat sack switches in and mounted. So we're just about done wiring wise and then uh, we've got a couple more things to do on the plumbing side and then we'll be wrapped up with this boat. Hit like and subscribe and check the wave out on this thing once we get this done and how it looks at night. That's what I'm most excited for. These RGBs are going to be awesome. Welcome back to the 247 build. So uh, we got all the cup holder lights in, we got the underwater lights in, we got most of the electrical tied up and we were just playing around with the boat over the last couple days and uh, just making sure everything works and we accidentally left on the cup holder lights. When you put those in stereo mode, they flash with the stereo, but when the stereo is off, they're just off. But what does happen is it still kills the battery. So we had a dead battery the other day and, and we're thinking, you know, how can we make sure that, you know, this doesn't happen to anybody else? Or if we, you know, sell this boat to someone that this isn't gonna happen to them on the water or in their driveway or anything else. So what we are decided to do is we're gonna install a relay to the cup holder lights. The underwater lights are controlled by a switch. The cup holder lights are controlled by a remote currently. That's just the way that Liquid Lumens kinda has it set up wiring wise. And so rather than just leave it that way and just hope we turn it off on the remote, we wanna install a relay to the cup holder lights um, or all, you know, kind of all the top side lights that we have to ensure that we don't kill the battery. So we went on Amazon and picked up this uh, relay. It's just a simple relay. So we're gonna hook it up to the ignition. So when you turn the ignition switch on, that'll all be powered. Um, and that way you won't, you won't kill your battery while you're out there hanging out and forget these on. So we're gonna go ahead and get the relays in. We're gonna put the batteries back in their boxes, get everything tied up wiring wise. And we'll just be one step closer to wrapping this thing up. We'll make sure to include a link in the description if you're looking for this relay, um, as long as as, wire, as well as a wiring diagram so you can easily install it. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we are going to be installing this relay. For the relay, we have um, five different wires coming out of here. Our black wire is going to be our ground wire. Our red wire is going to be our power in, coming from the battery, or in our case, will be coming in 
um, from our Blue Sea power distributor block there. Um, the blue wire then will be going out. That will be power out to our liquid lumens box and our white wire will be our remote wire. And we are actually going to be taking the remote wire from the amp inside of here that is connected to the dash that will tell us when the ignition is on. And so that remote wire will be powered on the same uh, circuit as the amplifiers. And this yellow wire is um, an accessory um, one that we will not be using for this project. It basically would tell, send another signal out for when the ignition switch was off to continue to giving power, but we will not be using that. So what I've done here is I've just extended the power and ground wire from our above deck box. I unhooked it from our below deck controller because we no longer need power from there since we're going to be running from the relay. I ran the wire underneath here. So I'm going to be hooking up our ground to, not to the relay, because uh, the box itself will need to ground out and the relay itself will need to ground out. So we'll be running two ground wires to the Blue Sea um, box here. I will be, however, running our power from uh, our relay here, the blue one, to this wire so that it can go straight into our liquid lumens above deck box and then I will be running the other power wire to our blue C uh, box down here and then I will be running a ground to our blue C box down there and then I will be running a remote wire over to uh, the relay into this white cord right here and then I will be mounting all of that right next to here I'll just be screwing this in next to the sub and boxes here and it will click into that allowing all those connections to be completed all right so as you can see we've got all of our wires hooked up here now we have our blue running to the liquid lumens box our white running from the remote from the stereo our black running to the ground on the C box down here our red getting power from the C box down here and then our black coming from the liquid lumens box also grounded out on the C box down here. Now we will be uh, screwing this in right here to keep it nice and clean with the rest of the controls. Um, but as you can see now, when we turn our ignition on here on the boat, it is also going to turn on all of our above deck lights. So now it is ignition controlled so that way it's separate from our below RGB lights which are here on the dash. So we have everything separate now and yeah it's good to go. All right we just wrapped up the gator step and now we're going to tackle some of these switches. So. Previously, these fat sack switches, along with a bunch of these other switches, just said ACC accessory. And trying to figure out what the hell's what is almost impossible. So what we did is we ordered these custom switches. We have phone charger, we have tower speakers, and we have the RGB underwater lights. And we wired those all to these switches. So what we're gonna do here, here's the phone charger by the way, um, what we're going to do is we're going to pop these switches off with this tool and replace them so that you always know what you're turning on. Hit up the link in the bio or the description and we'll uh, give you guys a link to these switches. You can actually custom make them to whatever you want to say. It's a pretty sweet uh, setup on a website. All right, we got our tower speaker switch here. We got our phone charger switch and our RGB lights. All labeled so you know what the hell you're turning on. Again, link in the description. So you guys can order these uh, on your own. 
Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Follow along as we wrap this thing up and get it on the water. All right, project 247 wiring is complete. We got our custom switches in here, RGB for the underwater lights, phone charger, tower speakers. We got everything hooked to the battery on that side. The relay in so that we're not killing the battery with the underwater cup holders. We turn the key on. As you can see, the cup holders light up with our sweet liquid lumens remote. We can switch the colors to any color we please. We can make them fade, flash to the music, whatever we want. If we turn this RGB light switch on here, we're hitting up the underwater lights. As you can see, and again, we can switch colors. I'll show you the back of the boat here. We have our RGB top side light. We have our liquid lumens pipeline. Underwater lights. We have very little left to do on this boat. As you can see, all the cup holders are lit up throughout the boat. We got our RGB sub underneath there. And we got our cups up here. This thing is going to look amazing at nighttime. <laughs>